Well, good morning, my friends. It's Dana Corsello. I'm so happy to be with you on this second day of May. Happy Easter Tide to all of you. Let me begin with this opening sentence. Alleluia. By death, Christ tramples death. On those in the tombs, he bestows new life. Alleluia. Let me repeat that. Alleluia. By death, Christ tramples death. On those in the tombs, he bestows new life. Alleluia. Let us pray. O Lord, who established your servant Athanasius through wisdom and your truth, grant that we, perceiving the humanity and divinity of your Son, Jesus Christ, may follow in his footsteps and ascend the way to eternal life, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This psalm appointed, so today is the feast day, May 2nd, for Athanasius of Alexandria. He was a bishop and truly one of the church's greatest theologians, patristic fathers. He died in the year 373, so the fourth century. But the psalm appointed for today in his honor is Psalm 71, verses 1 through 8. So let me read this. You're, you're going to recognize it. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb, you have been my strength. My praise shall always be of you. You have become a portent to many, but you are my refuge and my strength. Let my mouth be full of your praise and your glory all the day long. I love this psalm. I think I just shared it a few weeks ago. But it's interesting that it's the psalm to celebrate the life of Athanasius of Alexandria. And I think I know why. This poor guy, I mean, he was a brilliant theologian. He was persecuted by the church. He was persecuted by everyone. And he was sent into exile at least five times because he fought the heresies of the early church. So let me tell you a little bit about him. Um, as I said, he lived in the fourth century. So his thing was, from the very beginning, um, he went to Nicaea to be with the Bishop of Alexandria. He traveled along with him, and that's where he learned and read about Arianism, the heresy that says that Jesus is not God. Jesus is not God. So for most of his life, he fought this heresy and was punished for it. Um, so let me tell you, and the, here's the issue. The issue is that he worried that if the Arians won this controversy, of course, which they were preaching when they went to the Council of Nicaea, that it would change the church theology who Jesus Christ was forever. Like he saw it as a real threat to Christianity. Um, and he was right, and he had this famous quote, and the famous quote was, if the world will stand against the truth, then I will stand against the world. If the world will stand against the truth, then I will stand against the world. And he, so what he's saying is, I'm standing for Christ and the truth, because he believed that Christ was God, that Christ was just not creaturely, someone born of God, but someone who is God, three equal persons of the Trinity. And he was called the hammer for God because he just was relentless in his pursuit. So, as I said, there was no one more um, significant the church than Ath for the church than Athena Athanasius. Gregory of Nazianzus called him the pillar of the church. Basil said he was the God-given physician of her wounds. So just a little bit about him. He was born around 295 in Alexandria. He was ordained a deacon in 319. 
and he quickly attracted this opposition by the presbyter Arius, who I said denied the full divinity of the second person of the Trinity. Now, Alexander, the Bishop of Alexandria, took Athanasius as his secretary and advisor to the First Ecumenical Council at Nicaea in 325, which dealt with this whole Arian conflict. He was, Athanasius himself, was successful in winning approval for the phrase that we all know, which has been recognized as homo homoousius, as expressing unequivocally the full Godhead of the Son of one being with the Father. We say it every single week in our creed. Um, well, then what happened was Alexander became bishop in, no, excuse me, Alexander, he died in 328. Then Athanasius became bishop. He fiercest, fearlessly defended the Nicene Christology against emperors, magistrates, bishops, and theologians. As I said, he was sent five times into exile. Um, he stood against the world on this, but yet by the final time of his last exile, his popularity among the citizens of Alexandria <laughs> were so great that the emperor had to recall him back to the city um, to avoid insurrection in the city. And where did he go? He was in Egypt, so he went and he uh, sojourned with the Desert Fathers. But here's something that's really neat that I read. C.S. Lewis said that truly the greatest masterpiece ever written was his On the Incarnation of the Word of God. He wrote this book, his treatise. Um, it's still widely read, and in it he writes, the Savior of us all, the Word of God, in his great love took to himself a body and moved as man among men, meeting their senses, so to speak, halfway. Get it? half divine, half human. He became himself an object for the senses, talking about Jesus, so that those who were seeking God in sensible things might apprehend the Father through the works which he, the Word of God, did in the body. Meaning you can't know God the Father if you don't know Jesus the Son, who was both divine and human. So C.S. Lewis said that his book was truly one of the masterpieces of all written literature, all books. But here's the crazy thing, and the thing that I didn't know, that he was only 19. He was, I mean, the, he was just a genius. He was only 19 when he wrote this book. That's what they say. Um, and then the other really cool thing that you need to know about Athanasius, and I always suggest that you go and read about these saints of the church on your own, but he, you know, the, <clears throat> he was one of those who, he came up with the order of the books of the New Testament. There are 27 books. He came up with what he thought were the books that should be canonized and in the order. Of course, that was all debated and everything, but of course, that's the way it stood. His influence on the church is just immeasurable. So that's why I wanted to tell you a little bit about Athanasius of Alexandria, a bishop who died in the fourth century. And the other, oh, here's the other thing. He had tons of enemies because he was exiled so much and, you know, he fought this Aryan controversy. So because he lived in Egypt and apparently he was a very short stature, that his enemies gave him the tag of the black dwarf. And I read about this in Christianity Today because he was short, he was a dark-skinned Egyptian bishop and he had tons of enemies. So he was Egyptian. Um, so in the end, but it was his theological enemies who were the ones who were exiled eventually from the church's teaching. So remember this, this is one of his famous quotes. If the world will stand against the truth, then I will stand against the world. Think about that. Think about the implications of that just in our political life today. But he's standing for Christ and he's standing for the truth. It's beautiful. It's a, I, anyway, I love that quote. Let me say it one more time. If the world will stand against the truth, then I will stand against the world. So he was a, one of the first agitators, one of the first protesters. Um, Really amazing, amazing human being. So we give thanks 
for Athanasius and his, uh, really, the, the Nicene Creed. And I mean, we, we wouldn't be the church without him. So I hope you found that interesting. All right, let us pray. Jesus, in your life, we receive life. Raise us to the new life of grace. You look with compassion on our human failings. Raise us to the new life of grace. You proclaim the hope of your resurrection as we offer you these prayers. My friends, I ask you, I have, I think, five friends right now, congregation members and friends who, five or six, who have recently, <clears throat> recently been diagnosed with cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer, um, the abdomen, brain, it's, I mean, I have, it's like I'm just overwhelmed with these beautiful people whom I love have been um, diagnosed with cancer, and of course, then those that they love and their families. So for everyone who's suffering from a recent diagnosis, regardless of whatever it is, please know we're praying for you. So I ask your prayers for those who are not well, those who are anxious, afraid, um, just can't put it all together. So we pray, we pray for the miracles of healing for everyone. You make us bearers of hope in a world of suffering and despair. Christ Jesus, raise us to the new life of grace. Amen. And now, my friends, will you join me and let us say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as, if, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God of victory over death, your son revealed himself again and again to convince his followers of his glorious resurrection. Grant that we may know his risen presence in love obediently. Feed his sheep and care for the lambs of his flock until we join the hosts of heaven in worshiping you and praising the one who is worthy of blessing and honor, glory and power forever and ever. Amen. So my friends, I pray that you have a blessed week, a beautiful weekend. May God's love, may God's grace, may the peace that surpasses all understanding, may it be with you and heal those whom you love. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.